young Tony Stewart, a winner over Gary Cameron, Robbie Stanley, the reigning champ, and Thomas Nichols. We'll show you some more highlights of those if we get a chance, and we'll be back with more of the Thunder right after this. A win here in Winchester. Now, now, Rice has got a pretty good night going here. He picked Kalita to be tough in the midget division. Kalita won it, and the guy at the top of the show that he said he thought was the tough cat to beat in the sprint division was Steve Butler. So just in case he's right in that prediction, let's meet the guy up close and personal. Really, I've only wanted to be two things in my life. One was uh, an Air Force pilot, and the other was a race driver. And kind of the Air Force pilot went down the uh, tubes when I had to get these things in fifth grade. So I'm thinking, gee, I can't fly fighter jets. What can I do? Well... Race cars, that's it. Today at age 35, Steve is a success in the air and in racing. Like a lot of drivers, he's an accomplished pilot. He flies himself to and from the track, and he's even flown a few aerobatic shows. Back in the early 80s, Steve's wife put up the money for him to go USAC racing. He quickly developed his skills on dirt and pavement and won the championship in 86 and 87, and again in 88 and 1990. Nobody else has done that. Not Parnelli Jones or A.J. Foyt or Larry Dixon. And Steve has a silver crown title as well. His shot at the bigs came in 1989. He went to Indy with car owner Jeff Stu. But dangerous out here. I like it better in the car. When I first got there, you know, I was the fastest rookie and set a, a record for the uh, final phase of uh, Steve for a rookie. And, all the old timers were telling me, man, you, you know, you're going to be rookie of the year and you're with a small team and, and it's really great. You know, you're a sprint car guy and it was just going super. Well, that was until a crash that totaled the team's only car and left Steve with a broken right shoulder. They bought another car and Steve crashed in as well, trying to find the speed and ended up missing the show. Up to that point, my career was building towards this uh, crescendo. And the IndyCar thing came and went. And that was a time of, of a lot of uh, soul searching. And that soul searching produced a conclusion. Sprint car racing is the most fun, and it's where he wanted to be. This enables Butler to balance his time with his family and his regular job as a service engineer for Delco Electronics in Kokomo. In addition, he's a frequent contributor to Open Wheel Magazine and is using that forum to work on the sports safety issues. You know, in the last few years, uh, we've lost three USAC guys, uh, you know, have been killed on pavement races. We've had a few serious head injuries and then the Wolfgang thing. You know, you have to, you have to be in a fog not to say, hey, you know, this aspect of the sport looks highly dangerous we've only got a few very small number of people that are participating in the pavement races and we have a whole lot of casualties butler's suggestions for immediate action more roll cage padding better standards for quick release steering hubs shut off valves for the main fuel line and jewelry now, these things could be done immediately at a cost of about three hundred dollars a car what else needs work down the road firefighting capability at the racetrack, safety coordinator to travel with the sanctioning body, and better standards for retaining fences and wall construction. Steve Butler. On and off the racetrack, I've had the opportunity to review an advanced copy of the piece that he wrote on the whole issue of race car safety for Open Wheel Magazine, and that uh, issue is in the mail, so you'll be getting it sooner. Check your newsstands and, and see what Steve Butler right here, saddled up in number 69, has to say about this whole issue. And this, of course, all springs from the uh, from the Doug Wolfgang incident. We're happy to report that Wolfie is continuing his recovery. Larry Wright, I know you had an opportunity to review that article. Your thoughts, maybe, on what Steve had to say here in this upcoming Open Wheel article. Well, I think that article, Dave, is a must-read for every driver, every mechanic, every car owner, every promoter, and every sanctioning body person in the industry. It's got a lot of good suggestions, and I think he's right. There are some things that need to be done and can be done immediately and at a very low cost. Steve Butler, author, is about to become Steve Butler race car driver. We're at Winchester Speedway, where the Sprint Car Main Event is ready to rock and roll. We'll be back with the Thunder.
We're about ready to go racing for 30 laps. The uh, sprint cars, Wayne Hammond and Tony Stewart, will share the front row. Remember, the first six, the fastest six qualifiers, are inverted. So row two will have Steve Butler, the four-time champion, Gene Lee Gibson, and row three, Steve Butler, make a Jeff Bloom, second fast qualifier, and Robbie Stanley, a shot at 5,000 bucks if he can pull off this victory from wins. The fourth row, Jim Keaton with Jeff Bloom on the back stretch. There's the track record uh, held by Steve Butler, set a couple of seasons for right. more of those. Here's a kid, though, I think, that has really come on. The race car that he's driving, a lot of different people were in it before he got in that car. It wasn't very successful. He got in that race car. He liked it. It liked him. And it's been uh, very successful ever since. Tony is presently fourth in the point standings. He was last year's Rookie of the Year and uh, just won his first career sprint victory, what, about uh, two or three weeks ago? Yes, and we saw him run his very first sprint car race here just less than a year ago, Gary, so he's come a long way in a long time. Dave Despain, what's the problem with the Jeff Bloom? Broken uh, drive shaft. Look at what's happened tonight. Three times we've seen that happen to guys. It happened to uh, Paige, it happened to Tony Ellis, you mentioned, now it's happened to Bloom. Broken drive shaft. Right along with Robbie Stanley at the start, they head for turn one, and that's how it looks on 34 degree banking. Quickly oh. off the second quarter and down the back stretch. Boy, oh boy, Gene Lee Gibson got very, very loose right there in front of Stanley. Stanley just pulled down and went right on about it. Great rest. Gene Lee Gibson's having a terrible time with that zero car. He moved way back very, very quickly. I think that's uh, Mahoney who just went around him, and now this Keeker's trying to get around him. He's having a problem with that zero car. Jim Mahoney, he's right behind Stanley. He also is running very quick. Two number one cars, one of red, one of yellow. Both are very, very fast. Mahoney actually looks like he's... Yellow flag, flag, yellow flag. We have a fire, a car is on fire coming off the fourth corner. Several cars involved. Somebody get in there. Immediately the fire crew there. And that obviously is not just alcohol burning because Alki burns without a flame. The red flag is out, a terrible situation here. And the flagman has the red flag out. What happens now on the replay? Somebody very loose, into the wall, up there, and that's uh, Howerton, got into the fence, way up the racetrack, Durnwall. There's Durnwall, the red number 19, and there's where the car burst into flames. Now, on the other side of the car that we didn't see earlier is Tice Carlson. Carlson is still in his car, the flames all around, and you can see him batting the flames. He's trying to get out of the race car. He knows it's on fire, he wants to get out of there. The fire uniform available, the drivers have to wear it. They have to take responsibility. We are going green, we still have 27 laps to go. The USAC Loctite Sprint Cars. You saw those cars wiggle as they hit that fire extinguisher fluid down there. It's a little bit slick, so they'll be more careful this time as they come off of turn four and go through that fire extinguisher material. The youngster, Tony Stewart, last year's Rookie of the Year, looking for his second victory of this season. But I tell you what, despite that gap over that battle for second, yeah, we have some veterans behind him. Steve Butler and now then uh, Stanley both moving around uh, hand, uh, hand hand right there. They move right on around him. They're going to go after Tony Stewart, the young versus the older guys. we got uh, Tony Stewart, the brand new kid on the block, Butler, the real veteran of this place, and Stanley, the kid who established himself last year as the main man of Winchester. Those two guys right there battling for second. Five sprint car championships. Butler with four, Stanley with last year's title. And Stanley has an extra $5,000 in wins money at stake here tonight if he can win this race. But look at Jim Mahoney in that red number one. He's not going to let these guys go either. He's not uh, been real quick here, or real good here in the past, but this year, driving that Johnny Vance car, he has been very, very quick. Well, of course, as they knock about on each other, uh, it gives Stewart a chance to pull away with a clean racetrack. That's right, but he's not really pulling away that much. Right now, Steve Butler's just biding his time. He's trying, he's running back there about five car lengths behind. Stanley right behind him, trying to figure out how to get by him. Mahoney the same way. They're all trying to figure out how they can make a nice, clean, smooth pass. Right there, you see that red car. He tried something that didn't work, and he fell back about five or six car lengths. And they are closing in on Tony Stewart. Now, Tony, all of a sudden, will be able to hear a car behind him. Because as loud as, as the car you're driving may be, you can still hear the engine of the car behind you. Tony Stewart appears to be a little bit loose right at this point in the racetrack. See that race car in the back end starts coming around. It's doing that little Winchester wiggle we're talking about where the rear end gets loose and shakes around on you. And it's not a real comfortable feeling. Right, but it, oh, right, it tapped the right rear of the butler. A rubber baby buggy bumper right there. And that's no place to do it Winchester, I'll tell you. Say that real fast. I did say it real fast. You know, now, I was just thinking, if Stanley can win this thing, collect the extra five thousand dollars, he destroyed Brad Marshall's car raceway. You think he might pay him back? I don't know. I don't think that's got anything to do with what's on his mind right now. Butler made that move, went right on around him. Stanley doesn't seem to be able to make the move near as easily as Butler did. I'm a little surprised. I thought Stanley would follow Butler right on through. Tony Stewart seems to be having a little problem, and I think Stanley is 
is being very careful. More cash courses than I've seen him here in the past. About to leave lap 13. Oh, Stanley gets very high, pushes up in turn four, and Mahoney goes by for a position. Yeah, I think Stanley's got some sort of a little problem right there because here he goes back under. Oh, very close again. Very, very close. The front end was pushing a little bit. He almost hit the left rear Jim Mahoney, but he did miss him. Now Mahoney pulls up behind Tony Stewart, and there at the top of your screen, you can see your leader as Butler now has put some distance between first and second. A great battle for second, third, fourth, and here comes Keeker. Keeker is now fifth, and he looks to the inside of Stanley as Stanley goes low. And B6 has snuck into the picture, but Mahoney snuck by, oh, again, Stanley very close to Tony Stewart. Oh, and he pulls right up in front of him, and Stewart hits him. Why Tony's been tapped? Boy, I'll tell you, he must be blessed tonight because you don't get by with bumps on this racetrack very often. He's been touched twice and came out of both of them smelling pretty good. Yeah, realistically, he's going to need a yellow to close down the gap. I think he's out of laps unless he has a yellow. They're working lap 23. This is only a 30 lap feature. Stanley and Butler both appear to be on a string. Both very smooth, very easy through the course. That's the way you want to race car. You can't turn the car. He developed a very bad push. Tony Stewart goes back under Kinker. Very close action right there. He kept that race car. Oh, look out. Just as I say, he kept it under control. He almost got down in the grass. And Eric, there we're back in the front of the pack. The white flag will be out this time by. And look at Stanley. Is he going to be able to pass Butler and pick up the extra $5,000 from wins? Oh, this could be a big payday halfway around. Down the back stretch on the 30th and final lap. One last shot for Stanley. Here he comes. He knows he can pick up the extra $5,000. Can he do it? Oh, he loses by a car lane. Man, oh, man. Butler. Well, you picked him early on when we came on the air. The Butler was a guy to look for, and Butler wins it. Stanley right on his heels, and just there's the congratulatory uh, wave of the hand. And there is a look at the four-time USAC Sprint Car Champion. He wins again here at Winchester. The 30 seconds for the winner interview. Congratulations, Steve Butler. Great job. Thanks, Dave. The Hoffman Sprint Car ran great. You know, the national rear end and KSC steering. All, all the guys are helping us. Uh, you know, it's been a tough season so far, and it's really great to get this win. We really needed it. You know, we had a lot of bad luck, and maybe now we'll get going. You did a heck of a job. I like that pass on Tony Stewart. <laughs> Thanks. The car was working great early. We had the brakes and the steering going away at the end. Uh, but, uh, you know, it lasted long enough, so we're glad to be here. All right, there's your winner, Steve Butler. It's history. It was great, and we sure hope you enjoyed it, ladies and gentlemen. What a night here at Winchester. <laughs> Baseball tonight is coming up next, so stick around for all the stick and ball action, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you what. Congratulations to Steve Butler. What a night it has been at Winchester. The good news is everybody okay after a wild and woolly sprint car main event. We're going to be right back at Indianapolis Raceway Park next week, thundering once again. We'll see you then. I'm Dave Despain for Gary Lee, Larry Rice, and the entire ESPN crew. Thanks for being here, and we'll thunder again next Saturday night.